In the case of medical emergency, most people would go to a hospital for surgery. But if you were located in a remote region of the world, that wouldn't be possible. Now, thanks to the NEMO missions, telesurgical applications can now extend beyond our world. We're not going to have a hospital on the surface of the moon or Mars. So to solve the problem of delivering health care as we go forward and push the, ex the edge of the envelope in exploration, we need to develop these new technologies. Okay, Dr. Williams, tell us what NEMO 9 aims to demonstrate. NEMO 9 is going to be a really exciting mission. In NEMO 7, we talked about telementoring, having a doctor direct another individual through performing a complex medical procedure. NEMO 9, we're actually going to be doing remote telerobotic surgery. Having a surgeon located in Hamilton, Ontario, simulated patient will be thousands of kilometers away on an underwater habitat and seeing whether or not we can do this successfully. And so they're going to actually be moving robotic sensors in Canada and those are going to move the actual robotic forceps and surgical instruments down on the Aquarius habitat to perform a sample operation. That type of telehealth technology can help us in routine medical care. It's also perfectly suited for disasters and disaster medicine where we would deploy teams to the field and whether it's in a disaster in North America or whether it's a disaster in another part of the globe, this capability that we're developing will truly change the face of healthcare. We hope that we can demonstrate the importance and its effectiveness in providing medical and surgical care to a crew on long-term space uh, travel to the moon or to Mars. The hope is some of the experiments will help surgeons deal with satellite sound delays as they direct long-distance operations. The wonderful people that make up uh, the crew uh, and, and being with them and just being immersed in that ocean environment on a pristine coral reef and being down there for 18 days, being able to wake up in the morning and look out the porthole and see the dawn and see the angelfish looking in at you, that's just going to be uh, an amazing thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. The way this mission is being set up, it really and truly is, is right in line with directly supporting NASA's exploration goals. And I think we have a real special opportunity to take advantage of and provide lessons learned that, that hopefully will have a positive impact and will provide value to the people that are developing the plans for going to the moon and onto Mars. And just living in this beautiful undersea environment and sharing it with some really fantastic crew members and all of us working together to make it a success. I'm looking forward to not only you know, visiting a beautiful coral reef, but actually becoming a resident of that coral reef. I'm very much looking forward to the exploration activities and the development of exploration procedures that we're going to do. But I'm also looking forward to the telemedicine, not just for its exploration aspects, which are very significant, but also for its applications on Earth. For whatever reason, if an area of the Earth does not have access to a major medical center, any of those areas will benefit from the technology that we're developing. I'm looking forward to living underwater. I'm going to have a much more profound understanding of life on our planet and appreciation of nature. It's a great opportunity that few people have. Uh, I'm very uh, thankful to have that opportunity.